Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through First Contact, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to Ancient Egypt, everybody, where the humans of the land have all kinds of stuff, and the aliens have arrived because they want some of that stuff. But they're not here to conquer, they are here to communicate so that we can learn each other's language and engage in a cultural exchange. Isn't that lovely? Uh, but the problem is, the aliens don't understand the concept of pointing at things. Because if they could just point at things, well, they could just communicate what they want. Since they can't do that, um, the aliens are going to have to teach the human players their unique alien language. And every time you play, uh, the alien player, or players, depending on how many players you've got, gets one of these randomly chosen boards that indicates a bunch of symbols that represent a bunch of different concepts in English. So here's the one I've got. Alrighty. So I know the alien word for alive and beautiful and heavy, etc., etc. The human players, they have their own um, uh, sheet of paper. Well, not a sheet of paper. This is actually a board that they will write on. It's a race board. Where, as they learn more and more words, they'll be able to better and better understand what it is I'm asking for. Right. And since I'm playing as a two-player game today, it's going to be 100% cooperative. If you play with three or more players, competition comes in. Um, and in fact, if you're playing with four or more players, there's going to be multiple aliens and multiple humans. And there's two winners. The best alien who gets all the stuff they want, because as you can see, uh, we also get a random card. The green alien wants all those green things. The blue alien wants the blue things. And the red alien, if you're playing with multiple players, wants the red things. The first player to get all the stuff they want uh, is the winner of the aliens. And the winner of the humans, if there's multiple humans, is whichever one was able to figure out the language best. But like I said, since we're playing cooperatively, there's one alien player, me, one human player, Jen. Alrighty, so how does it work? Well, the rules suggest that if you're a new to the game, or if there are two humans, or in my case, only one human, uh, Jen over there, that you start with a turn zero, where the, by good fortune, the humans learn definitively one word, the meaning of one alien word. So they've just got that, you know, right from the get-go. In fact, actually, each human gets to learn one specific word, and uh, then the game starts proper. So if there were three humans, well, the humans would get to find out the specific word for, I don't know, well, it depends on what they ask. They could ask, what's the word for metal? Or um, weapon, or flight, or knowledge, or whatever. And the alien player would just be able to come right out and say, oh, knowledge is a circle. And you know, uh, just could come right out and say it. Uh, since there's only one human player, we are only going to get to do one. So the human player takes a look at all 25 items. And you can see the game comes with a big old deck of two-sided cards. So every time you play, you're going to get a different combination of items out here. Looks at those and tries to ask one of the 25 words. And the one that ideally would be most useful. And I think Jen... See, just taking a quick look at the stuff that's available, Jen will ask for the alien word for alive. Um, because if she knows that, that, well, I mean, there's there's a bunch of alive stuff. There's antelope, sheep, horses, turtles, um, woman. And um, so knowing uh, if something, when the, when the aliens ask, hey, I'm looking for something alive, that would help the player narrow it down quite a bit. Because a tablet with inscriptions and a shackle, that's not alive. So Jen asked for the word alive. I look for it. I find it right there. And I just write it here. And all human players, if there were multiple human players, all human players would now know the alien symbol for alive. And what that means is they all, on their own boards, which they keep secret from each other, because the humans are competing, they write down, alive is that hourglass symbol. Okay, so that is handy to know. Now, like I said, if I was playing with, if there were more human players, each human player would get to ask one word. Uh, but since it's just a solo game, we're only getting one, and now the game is afoot. So here's the way a round works. Each human player gets to um, try to intuit the meaning of another word. And then after all the human players have done that, each alien player gets to use their language to ask for an item on the board. So, Jen uh, is going to try and figure out, using up to five of these items, a new word. And so, what is she going to ask about? Well, what she does is, like I said, she picks one, two, three, four, or five items, and normally you're supposed to tap them 
to indicate which ones you've done, but um, since there's no blue player today, I'm just going to use these blue markers. So Jen can pick up to five items, and what is she going to pick? She will pick a headdress, needle, thread, and... Um, yeah, she'll stop right there. So she's going to indicate those three. And like I said, normally you would tap them all. And now the alien players take a look at that and say, hmm, what common characteristic is there between those three um, items on the board? And is there an alien word for those three? So in this case, we end up looking at my um, board and... Needle, headdress, thread. I think, folks, you're probably already guessing what it might be. And um, as you might have guessed, there is, where is it on here? Clothes. I, now, at this point, he, players are not allowed to speak or communicate at all. The, alien, the, the human player who is just picking one to five items picks them in silence. And then the alien... Now, the aliens can discuss amongst themselves. If there are multiple aliens, what do we think they mean? And you know, if there was another human alien, I think we would both just look at each other and say, yeah, it's this, isn't it? It's, it's totally that. Because we cannot say out loud the name of any of those 25 characteristics. We can't say, do you think she means clothes? Or maybe she means human, because all those things are human. But no, if she meant human, she would have actually chosen woman as well to include that. Um, so it's probably close. Anyway, um, since I'm playing solo, there's no communication at all. I don't have to work this out with another alien player to figure out what the ideal translation of what they're going for is. I think it's clothes. So what I do is, again, without indicating anything other than what I think, I write down a symbol. And the symbol is this one which, as you can see, on my secret board is closed. So I say, oh, those three things? Yeah, we aliens have a word for that. It's this. And then Jen has to, in turn, uh, assume... And in this case, I think it was pretty obvious. And it's interesting. Oh, she could have actually marked shackles, too, because that is something you wear. But she didn't. And that might make me wonder, wait a minute, if she wants clothes, why didn't she say shackle? Because shackle is a form of clothing. And maybe she meant something else. Um, could she have meant something else that, um, well, she couldn't have meant tools because she chose headdress and a headdress is not necessarily a tool. So, um, you know, Jen was asking for clothes and with the benefit of hindsight, it was kind of an oversight not to have meant no to shackles as well, but in, I'm just playing so fast. I didn't notice it either. Jen will assume that she now knows, oops, she now knows, let me try and get this a bit better, the alien word for clothes. Okay. So, that was that. And if there was another human player, the other human player would now get to pick one, two, three, four, or five items that hopefully have some common characteristic. And then, once again, the aliens would have to try to figure out, right, what are they talking about here? Now, in this case, you know, that was a pretty straightforward one. Sometimes they can get a little bit trickier, especially after you've learned a bunch of words and you're trying to come up with combinations of things to define the other. Like, if um, the human wanted to discover the meaning of or the, the word... The, the alien word for defense, what would that be? Um, you could say galley, maybe. Uh, a galley could be a defensive thing. A net could be a defensive thing. Uh, so that would be a pretty tough idea to get across, potentially. All right, but anyway, so uh, Jen chose a pretty easy one. I think everybody's pretty confident that Jen, the I, that Jen knows two words. She knows the word for alive, because that was uh, part of turn zero. And we think... If we're all on the same page, she knows the word for clothing. And now, all the humans are done, and so now it's the alien's turn. Each alien in specific player order, first the red alien, then the blue alien, then the green alien. Although, in a two-player game like this, I am the green alien. There is no red or blue alien. I now get to ask for items that I want. And um, this thing tells me that I want a table, a headdress, thread, a pyramid, a horse... A cucumber, a plow, and a buffalo. Um, I have nine rounds to communicate that I need those eight items using very, very limited communication tools. So what am I going to ask for? Well, let's see. I right. So Jen knows the word for alive. So if I were to say, "Hey, it's alive." Then she would say, "Well, maybe she want. Maybe I want the horse, or the sheep, or the buffalo, or the antelope." That's not good enough. Um, because I, I don't want any of those. No, that's not true. I do want the horse and the buffalo. 
Right. But I don't want the antelope, and I don't want the sheep. The blue player wants the sheep. If there were blue... Um, oh, and I don't want the turtle. So, there's several things there that I don't want. So if I tell her, hey, I want something alive, I've got what? You know, maybe a one in three shot that she will give me the correct thing. And if she doesn't give me the correct thing, that means we're burning time. If you're playing a higher player count and it's the competitive game, everybody's racing and you don't want to make mistakes because if on a given round I don't get an item but my opponents do, I might not win as the aliens. But in the uh, two-player game, we have I'm just using these red markers for the red alien as a timer. I have run through my first round. This is going to be my first request. I get to make nine requests to get these eight items. So what am I going to ask for? Am I going to ask for something alive? Well, I could stop there. Or here's an interesting thing. If I want, I could say it's not, nah, not alive. Drawing a line over the top of a symbol means it's the antonym. It means it's... Well, it doesn't mean it's dead necessarily. It just means it's not alive. So I could ask for something alive, or I could, I could help minimize it by saying it's something that's not alive. Now, I know the human, or I think the human, knows one other word, which is clothing. And if I look at clothing, I do want thread. And I do want the headdress. Right. So I could say, hey, you know what? I want some clothing. And so if, if this is what I do, I say, I want a, a piece of clothing that is not alive. Um, now, that, this is arguably superfluous information. I don't have to give that information. Um, but, uh, uh, right. And the interesting thing is, what if I told the humans that it's a piece of clothing that is alive? What, what the heck would that be? Well, that would get a bit trickier. At that point, um, the humans might think, I mean, well, here's a woman here. She's clearly alive and she's wearing clothing. She, uh, but this horse in this picture is also wearing clothing. So if I needed one of those two things, and that's the interesting thing, I do need the horse. So I could say it's alive and wearing clothing. Um, you know, or I could say it's alive and not wearing clothing. Which means, uh, so I do want that horse. That's interesting. But there's a bit of a gamble because she might think if I say it's alive and, and it's something to do with clothes, she might choose woman. And in um, with, with more players, these black spaces don't mean anything. But in a two-player game, it's very, very dangerous. If the human chooses one of the items, which includes woman, in the black spaces, I lose an extra round. So this would be a big gamble. If I say it's alive and wears clothing, I mean, is there anything else she might think? Does she, do you, she, maybe she'd think a turtle? Because turtles, they wear a shell. That's kind of wearing clothing. They probably wouldn't think antelope. But I'd be willing to bet if I said alive and has something to do with clothing, she'd pick one of these. She'd have to go, pick blind. And, um... But here's a way, here's a way that I could try to make that choice a little bit more straightforward. I don't have to limit myself to the words that they know. I could throw other words in. I've got 25 concepts here. And so what I could do is, where's the symbol for human? The symbol for human is this. In this game. In a different game, the symbol for human might be uh, this kind of omega sort of thing. So I could say, hey, it's alive, it's clothing, and it's not human. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I, this is what I'm going to say. I can say as many words as I want. And the interesting thing is, uh, now the human player has to figure out what do I mean. And they have to kind of read between the lines. And here's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping they'll figure out from the uh, from the live and the clothing that, okay, it's got to be one of these two things. And then they know I've said another word. And I've said it's not something. And, I mean, I could be saying it's not round. Or I could be saying it's not beautiful. Or it's, it's not um, warm. Or it's not big. Or it's not um, solid. There's a, or it's not a tool. There's a lot of things I could be saying there. But... Um, what I'm hoping is that with just these two things, they could say, okay, well, if an alien were trying to use a third word and they, and they know I don't know what it is, what might that third word be that I'm saying it's not? Well, in real life, I might be saying it's not you. It's not a human. Um, and, and that's what I'm trying to say. It's the horse in the clothes. It's not the human. But the question is, would you as the human player, understand what this is. So the human player, meanwhile, they're trying to figure out, what the heck does this alien mean? Don't they know I don't know what this word is? The human player can write down, I don't know what that symbol is. But the, the aliens have used it. And you can start trying to take notes that way. So, um, 
Right. The uh, human player gets to pick one thing to hand to me. And uh, actually, the way it works with multiple players, uh, basically, if there were multiple human beings, all human beings would get the opportunity to pick one thing. And every all human players figure it out in secret. Like So they might say, okay, yeah, it's the horse. You know, or they might say it's the human, or they might say it's the turtle, um, because maybe uh, maybe they thought it was big that this is the word big, and if it's not big, it's small. The turtle is the smallest thi live thing that wears clothes because it wears a shell. You know, so all the human players might all choose the same thing. They might all choose differently. They choose in secret. They all reveal at the same time, and the alien then hands out. Um, well, if if any of the humans got it right, the alien gets to mark that yes. We got it right, and the humans also get benevolence tokens, which are points for them at the end of the game. Now again, I'm playing two-player, so there's no competitive nature. I don't have to keep track of giving her benevolence. I just have to get the right thing. And um, Jen doesn't have to worry about choosing in secret and then revealing simultaneously because there's no other human she's competing with. You have to imagine it's like different villages or different tribes or something like that, and all humans are competing for the love of these aliens. So, what is Jen going to do? It's not something... I would like to think Jen would get it. Um, and this is actually a big part of the game. If you have a good line of communication, just in your day-to-day -day life with the people you're playing with, and you can kind of intuit each other's logic, that can give you a big leg up. I'm going to assume that Jen figures, okay, it's got to be one of these things, and um, you know, and it's such a wide array. I mean, it could have been big or small or or animal, but or no, no, there isn't an animal. But chances are, in the absence of anything else, Jen is going to take a, a, a leaping guess, and she's going to offer me the horse. She. Well, she'd write it down on her little secret thing and then reveal it at the same time ever. But she's just point, uh, do you want a horse? And I say, why? Yes, I do. And now, all I mean, that really, uh, there's not supposed to be any communication there either. Jen's supposed to just offer me the horse. And if I put my marker on it, that means we were successful. And if we were playing competitively, Jen would also get a benevolence token because that goes towards her score. And other players might have done it too. Now, there's an interesting thing. If Jen had, for whatever reason, uh, figured alive, clothing, and not something, say somehow she thought that meant a buffalo um, for some reason, and she offered me the buffalo instead of the horse, even though she didn't understand what I was saying, um, and I, she must have interpreted it in some other weird way, hey, it turns out, I need the buffalo too. So I would still take the buffalo, I would still give her a point, but she would probably have the wrong idea of what this symbol is. But because um, Jen now thinks she, she, you know, if I, if I had said no, if I had just not given, Jen probably would have figured, oh, this must have meant something other than human. And so she could make a note of that if she wants. But since um, she could now take a, she could take a pretty educated guess that human is probably this, because she was able to read between the lines and intuit what I actually meant by throwing that third symbol out there. So, that was an example where it worked well. That could have blown up in my face. But anyway, that was the first round. I've got eight more rounds to get seven more items. And we now go back to the humans, and the human or humans, once again, start asking for um, words that represent other concepts. So, what would Jen want to know about now? Let's see here... A, right. So she could, I mean, there's flowers here. So she could say beautiful. Is there anything else here that's beautiful? The headdress. So she could, she could indicate the flower and the headdress and the woman, let's say. And then by indicating those things, she's trying to find out the word for beauty because that would help her learn more stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, but that would only help her, like, you know, learn yes or no about three items, at least from her perspective. But who knows? Maybe I personally, as an alien, think obelisks are beautiful. Or, you know, I might interpret flower, headdress, and woman as something else. Like, um, I might interpret that as... I'm not quite sure what I would interpret that as. But anyway, I don't know if she's going to do that one. Especially since she could go... She could go... Like... Hmm... Oh, man. I mean, there's just a million ways she could go. Uh, yeah, you know what? I think she will. She's going to do that. She's going to do this, and this, and this. And um, so she's asking me, what is the common characteristic of those items? Oh, by the way, I should have mentioned, as the alien player, I should be making note. I know she knows what alive is. I'm pretty sure she knows what clothes is. And I can also remind myself that, hey... 
In theory, hopefully, she knows what human is too, if she figured out my hidden message. I don't know that one for sure, but anyway. So, Jen is point just those three things. I remember she could indicate up to five things. And in fact, she could indicate, I mean, she could indicate this as well, if she wanted to, because, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, not banana, not banana. So let's say Jen does that. She does those four things. And now I am left wondering, what does she mean? Which item, not alive or human or clothes, and again, I'm only assuming she knows human, what could what could um, represent these five things? And, um, you know, and so I, I've got to figure it out. I don't think she's asking about food because, you know, well, she didn't ask about any food type stuff. She didn't ask about anything that's like weapons. So, I mean, I don't think it's too far out of the realm that I might intuit and understand. Now, this is kind of hard for me to replicate because, of course, I'm one player. I know exactly what she meant by this. But is there anything I might misinterpret? Uh, a horse is fast, but a, a headdress isn't fast. Um, you know, humans have knowledge, but flowers? That's a bit of a stretch. Long? No. Tool? No. Weapon? No. Flight? Bright. Hmm, bright, that's a... I mean, you know, if she hadn't done the horse, if she hadn't done the horse, I might think, um, you know, because they're very... These three are very bright and colorful. And, you know, so I mean, maybe I might think brightness. Um, metal, uh, plant. All right, well, I, let's see. She did this, so there's a flower. But since she didn't touch leaf or cucumber or anything, I'm pretty sure she's leaving plant out of it. So that's probably not it. Valuable. A headdress is valuable. A human being is valuable. A horse is valuable. But is a flower valuable? Probably not. Probably not. So it's a good thing. If she had just done those other things, I might have thought, oh, valuable. But if I'm thinking valuable, then why didn't she include, oh, I don't know, um, you know, like a, a galley. That'd be a very valuable thing, obviously. Heavy. No. I mean, the horse is heavy, but I don't think of these other things necessarily as heavy. Yeah, I think, after thinking about it long and hard, of all the different things Jen could be asking me about here, do, are those things sharp? No. Um, are they solid? Yeah, I suppose. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's a bit broad. So, yeah, I think I will, without t uh, giving Jen any indication of I understand what she means, I'll just go like this. And now it's up to Jen to make note of the fact, well, she hopes that I understood her meaning. She was asking for beautiful things. That horse was a bit of a stretch. Would an alien consider a horse to be beautiful? I mean, horses are pretty universally considered to be beautiful things, right? Right? So anyway, so that was Jen. Hopefully, and we're both hoping, she's learned another word. And more to the point, hopefully, she's learned another word that I can now use. Because once again, I have to communicate that I want a table. I want a headdress. I want thread. I want a turtle. Um, I don't want a horse anymore. I want a cucumber. I want a plow. And I want a pyramid. So, okay. So the words that I think Jen knows are alive, sh uh, alive, human, beautiful, and clothing. Right, and so clothing would still... Uh, can I communicate thread to her now? I could say it's not alive. I could say it's clothing related. Would, would it, if, if I said it's beautiful, what would that mean? I mean, thread can be beautiful. It depends on the color. But it's really beautiful after it all comes together, right? So that's a bit of a stretch. I probably wouldn't say that. Um, and I got to ask for something. I gotta ask for a plow, but um, you know it's 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 not alive and it's human based, but it's not particularly beautiful. It's not particularly clothing. Uh, what about the woman? What about the woman? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, actually, that's pretty easy. I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna say, it's alive, and it's human, and what the heck? Just to just to guarantee. Since Jen used it, I'm going to say it's alive, it's human, and it's beautiful. I don't even, I, I could just say it's human and leave it at that. But I'm going to do that. And now, hopefully, Jen can intuit, if she has interpreted correctly, um, the, uh, the, the human and the beautiful and the clothes, because those are three unknown things, what would Jen try to offer? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second, though. No, I don't want to do this because I don't want the lady. That would be, oh, terrible. Quick. Oh, that's some cross wires. I don't want to ask her that. I definitely don't want it. I want to make sure that she doesn't offer me that. That would have been a terrible thing to ask for. I got confused. Oh, it's the headdress. The headdress is what I want. Could I communicate that? I could say, yes, let's do this. I could say, it's not 
alive. But it is beautiful. Um, let's see, I got human and clothing, and I would say that it is clothing. Okay. And do I say anything about human? Well, it's something a human would wear, so what the heck? I'm going to throw in the human as well. I'm saying four words. Um, it's not alive, it's beautiful, it's human, and it's, clo uh, it's, it's clothing, and it's human. Will Jen be able to understand that? Would you be able to understand that based on what is out there? What will Jen try to offer me now? Um, and, well, I mean, I think to me, it's pretty darn obvious, right? Because I articulated everything. But that's the trick. When you're playing this game for real, you don't get to articulate your thinking. And what will invariably happen, even for players who are completely simpatico, sooner or later, somebody will think, oh, I get it. That the, the, the connecting tissue of these things, it must be knowledge. And they'll write down knowledge. And from that point on, they'll think they're confident that this is the symbol for knowledge. And it's not. It's the symbol for human. And there, you can start getting some miscommunications. And that's where things can kind of go a bit off the rails. Um, but I don't know if that's going to happen here. Because folks, I think I'm going to stop right there. Because that should give you a pretty good idea of just the overall flow of how First Contact works. And if you want to hear some final thoughts, how Jen and I feel about having played it as a two-player game and as a four-player game, a rarity for us. Us, you can hit that eye up in the top right corner screen to go to the final thoughts in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.